Do you have a bunch of music, movies, and TV shows on your desktop you wish you could do more with? Do you wish you had something you could store data to and access from anywhere on your network? Do you wish you had a low-cost, low-energy, always-on network media server? Hey guys, how you going? Well, today we're going to answer all those wishes with a DIY project I have for you, the Raspberry Pi NAS. What I have here is a Raspberry Pi set up to be many things. It runs an SMB share for local network detached storage, a media server for media streaming, a torrent box, and much more. So how much does this cost and how much energy does it use or not use? TLDR, not a lot. So what does this do for me? Well, this device is connected to my network and affords me access to my media in a centralized location. I can view and edit files I put on the device from anywhere across my network and stream all my content from it, even 4K content, with something like Plex. Now, this is of course nothing new. There are abundant commercial options. However, trying to do something myself and trying to do it cheaper than what is commercially available is my ethos in nearly everything I do. Other benefits to building this kind of system myself is having full control of its functionality, its security and any repairs. I'm not hindered by any proprietary designs or technologies. In this project, I have met my objectives. This humble pie does all that I need for far less than any commercial alternative, at least any commercial alternative here in Australia. Now, I will caveat my comments by saying, while this is indeed network detached storage, it's perhaps not a NAS in the most modern sense. While I have the ability to connect to almost infinite drives, I wouldn't do this because of limitations with the Raspberry Pi. I only have one hard drive connected, and this meets my needs. The Pi's USB is a bit finicky, so adding more drives, as would be commonplace with commercial alternatives, is not something I'd advise. If you want to run RAID for redundancy or striping for performance reasons, then this is not the way to go about implementing a NAS. I don't have a desire to run RAID, striping or mirroring for redundancy or performance reasons though. So onto details, I basically had three overall requirements driving the design. I wanted to be able to stream up to 4K media, run off only one power supply, and fit and be able to use one to two 3.5 inch hard drives. To meet the first requirement, the Pi is running Open Media Vault. This is a media-centric operating system that allows you to configure connected hard drives, network shares, and with use of Potena, allows me to run just about any Linux application I want. Other useful applications in addition to those I use might include Octoprint for 3D printer control, Pi-hole for network-wide ad blocking, or a VPN application for data transfer across the web. The options are near endless with this setup. It requires some familiarity with Linux, but there are plenty of good guides which I'll link in the video description, and few command line interactions once Open Media Vault is up and running. The second design requirement necessitated some custom wiring, but there are more user-friendly solutions on the market. You can use SATA hats, M.2 hats, all for the Pi for example, or just use the USB hard drive as is. For my NAS, 12 volt power is supplied to the hard drive and a step-down regulator is used to power the Raspberry Pi. In regards to storage, I'm using an 8TB 3.5 inch hard drive taken from a Western Digital USB backup drive. So what did this cost? Raspberry Pi plus hard drive plus miscellaneous cables $400. This is about half the price of a commercial alternative that will do what this does. It also only uses about 25 watts of power, which is a fraction of what a desktop requires. So if your media is a mess on your desktop, this is a very simple, cheap and flexible system to give you more power over your media, amongst many other benefits. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions.